The inner circle around Antonio Armstrong Jr. is fiercely protective. His grandmother's childhood friends, the girlfriend, AJ relaxes around them. And every so often, we get a glimpse of it. But it's tough to be a normal teenager when some people think you killed your parents. AJ's 2019 has been spent in a courtroom instead of a college classroom, learning forensics instead of football plays, surrounded by attorneys and judges and piles of evidence. This is reality for AJ. Not how he pictured it, because back in 2016, AJ's family was pretty perfect. Beautiful, successful, smart, and strong. Parents Dawn and Antonio Sr. were passionate about health and wellness. They owned gyms. He was an ex-NFL player. I want you to pick back up those visions and those dreams that you once had. A personal trainer, a motivational speaker, an assistant pastor at his mother's church. Dawn loved big, often posting on Facebook how proud she was of her kids, how deeply she loved Antonio. On July 24th, this guy is my everything. He completes me in every way. He's my best friend. And after almost two decades, it's the simple things that make us happy. Five days later, the couple would be dead. Murdered while they slept in their southwest Houston home, both shot in the head with Antonio Sr.'s gun from his nightstand. 1.14 a.m., A.J. called 911, whispering to the operator. He heard gunshots from his parents' room, and he was hiding in a closet. A.J. woke up his 12-year-old sister, Kara. Police arrived. A.J. disarmed the security system, unlocked the door, and let officers in. Hours later, the 16-year-old high school junior was charged with killing his mother and father. Why do this interview? Why, why talk to me? Uh... I mean, I feel like people probably would like to hear from me and just hear the things that like I have to say and just because I mean, I'm always quiet about things. So I'm sure they probably would like to know what AJ has to say. Everyone has. I'm sure you've talked about this at length. I have to ask you just one time. Did you kill your parents? No, never, never. What do you want to say to them? I mean, for me, it's as simple as I didn't do it. It's just as simple as that. I, I've been adamant about that since the moment everything happened, from the moment I was on the phone till this day. I've said I didn't do it. I'll never change from that because I know it's the truth. And for me, that's just, you know, that's just the one thing that I really want people to know because being in this situation and just that being a constant reminder that someone would even think that it's something that I would do, like it's just, like it hurts, it's frustrating. There are people out there watching this who think, yeah, he did, he did it, he killed his parents. H how do you take that in? If you would have asked me that a couple years ago, I would have told you it genuinely, genuinely bothered me. But now with me growing up and maturing, I don't, I can't sit here and allow it to affect me because at the end of the day, not everyone's gonna love me. I'm not gonna be everyone's favorite. I'm, people are gonna, People are going to take things how they want to take things. You can't control that. AJ has always said an intruder killed his mother and father, broke into the house without setting off the alarm, and shot Antonio Sr. and wife Dawn. But AJ was charged, spent eight months in juvie jail, had dozens of court appearances, and nearly three and a half years after the murders, finally, the trial. He was now 19 years old. While his high school friends were off at college, AJ sat in a courtroom looking at autopsy photos of his mom and dad, listening to police call him a killer. Bring us back to those moments where you did break down in court. What, were, what was going through your mind? Uh, I mean, it's just seeing pictures of my parents again, um, just sitting there and rereading text messages. I just put myself back in that situation. And I just reimagined just having those conversations with my parents, whether I was getting yelled at or whether I was doing something good, like just to have that again, just like just five minutes, if that's what it was, just, just to have that again with my mom, my dad, just that's all I want. 40 hours of testimony from 36 witnesses. On the stand, former football coaches, security alarm experts, gunshot residue analysts, AJ's girlfriend, and his younger sister, who was the only other person in the house that deadly night. 
Seeing Kayra up there was painful. We always say she's had it the hardest. She was 12 years old and she's had to go through life. I was in jail, you know, my parents aren't there. So it's just, she's just had a lot. The jury deliberated for 19 hours and in the end, they could not agree. We are unable to arrive at a unanimous verdict without causing some members of the jury to do violence to their conscience. What was that like to, to work for that long and then to hear that it was a mistrial? It was frustrating. I was hurt. I was really upset and I had built my faith. I was so adamant on the idea that I knew this was going to be it. Like no one could convince me anyway, like anything else that this, this was going to be it for me. And to have the opposite of that happen, it hurt and it took me a second to kind of gather my thoughts. And once I did, my grandma was telling me, AJ, it could have been way worse. Like you could have been in jail. We couldn't be around you right now. You couldn't be going on with us tonight. Like we couldn't be living to fight another day right now, but we are. And that's at the end of the day, that's all that matters. How are you going to do this again? With the same group of support, same great attorneys, same what we did the first time together. Are you prepared for an outcome that you don't want? What if they find you guilty? I, like I told you earlier, I refuse to think about that. But AJ can't ignore the fact that spending the rest of his life in prison is a real possibility. His attorneys say this time around, the trial will be longer and they have a new strategy. There's some, some things that was not allowed in the first trial that we anticipated are going to come in in this trial that are pretty eye-opening, um, pretty devastating to the state's case. So that's a little bit what we think may be different. So there will be new evidence in this case or new witnesses? Yeah, potentially, yes, ma'am. We're not going to get into our strategy this time like we did in last time, but it's going to be longer and tune in, you'll see. AJ didn't testify during the last trial and he won't this time. Why not put him on the stand? Well, he's already given a statement. Um, he gave his statement to the police. He, he sat there and answered as many questions as they, you know, asked. So do you think how difficult it would be for a 16, 17 year old young man who's never been in court before, never testified to go against a trained killer like John Brewer? I mean, he's going to he's going to tear him up. John Brewer, one of the three prosecutors on the case. We've asked the DA's office for an interview. They won't talk on camera, but gave us this statement after April's mistrial. Antonio Armstrong Jr. murdered two citizens of our county and we will continue to fight for justice. AJ's family will keep fighting too. His grandmothers and grandfather, Antonio and Dawn's parents, are AJ's biggest supporters who believe deeply in their grandson's innocence. How, how have you changed and grown up? I'd say this situation has definitely caused me to grow up a lot faster than I probably would have just because I've been put in a situation where now my little sister like actually does look up to me. I've had to take my faith to a level that most 19, 20 year olds probably wouldn't take their faith to just because I've been tested with different situations and things like that. So for me, it's just my circumstances have caused me to grow up and I've had no choice but to just go along with it.